But I want to come to the uh, the female economist in the book, uh, the wonderful uh, Joan Robinson, who uh, was an interesting and also kind of a very Marxist figure in a lot of ways. But obviously, what she focused on hugely was uh, low wages and and imperfect competition, because we often economists project that there's going to be perfect competition in an economy, and then that's often not the case. And obviously, this year is a, another year of strikes. So many strikes, so many different in, uh, groups of people demanding higher wages and uh, wages not keeping up with inflation. What do you think Joan would have made of it today? Yeah, she's an absolutely fascinating character. So Joan Robinson, in the span of the 1930s, went from a middling student to becoming one of the leading, wrote the first textbook on Keynesianism. She was one of the five people at Cambridge who was entrusted by John Maynard Keynes to review the general theory, which is his seminal work. At the time, she was married to one other member of this inner circle, Cambridge Dawn. She was also having an affair with yet another member of this inner circle, who was also Cambridge Dawn. So I like to think she had a casting vote on the general theory, three (laughs) out of five (laughs) of the people. (laughs) Um, So Joan Robinson essentially took Keynesianism and applied it to the labor market. So a a basic premise of Keynesianism is that markets are not perfect. I know, right? So obvious. (laughs) But it took, it, uh, it, well, no. Maybe we'll get to Keynes, but it it um, it, it, it completely uh, revolutionized um, thinking. So her theory is called monopsony. So that's monopoly in the labor market. So we have imperfect competition and you have um, power rest vested in a few companies. So they have monopoly power in the labor market. Then wages will be lower than they should be. Just like in monopolies, prices are higher than they should be. So monopsony is currently the theory that economists have turned to um, in recent years to try and understand why are wages so low? Because that's actually the title of this chapter. Why are wages so low? Why is it that um, in the U.S., for instance, productivity has increased, but wages have not kept pace? Um, Why is it that wages are so low in this country? It's low in Germany. It's low in Japan. And her theory helps to see the power um, of market dominance, and that's begin to inform some of our understanding of what makes wages so low. So some of the explanations are around uh, bargaining power of workers. Some of the explanations are around the rise of temp workers, part-time workers who do not have job security. Some of the explanations, and again, it differs from countries, from countries um, are around superstar firms. So the one of the biggest determinants of how much you get paid if you are a janitor is whether or not you work for Apple or you work for your local, um, you know, um, Tesco. And so these, uh, these differences have to do with the dominance of Apple. Um, and her theory, monopsony, helps us understand um, to look for what's causing, what's creating the market power of these companies. And once you recognize it, um, then can you regulate uh, to promote wages that keep up with productivity? So her theories are hugely important today as we grapple with, you know, how is it that returns are so high to owners of capital and yet labor don't seem to be getting, you know, their, um, you know, a share that that reflects, you know, how much um, how much they are producing. And I think so, therefore, she's particularly, um, you know, pertinent, I think, today. But yes. Later on life, um, she, um, she, oh, she's the, uh, I should have said, um, at the time she was doing economics and you could do exactly the same degree, um, as a man, but you wouldn't be awarded a degree in economics. She studied at Cambridge. So it's very rare to have female economists. Um, uh, so she uh, was unusual and she became extremely prominent um, because of her theories around monopsony, but she never won the Nobel Prize in economics, the highest prize. And it uh, could be lots of reasons for that. Um, could be sexism, could be that she turned against her own work later in her life. She denounced Keynesianism later on and decided that could not explain why some countries grow rich and most countries are poor. So she started giving her lectures in Cambridge wearing communist uh, outfits from Vietnam, dressed as a peasant, um, because she became a adher- she became a um, a supporter of Marxism. Um, so I guess if you disavow your own body of work, that probably is not going to help you win the Nobel Prize. <laughs> so-